Welcome back to my adventures in Dolby Atmos and in particular now that Apple is streaming 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos on Ventura I was very keen to get back and have a look at the room correction for multi-channel processing and Dirac were ever so nice to extend my license for me my demo license so I could try experiments now with all the new operating systems and this is running Apple native which is really good but then it kind of goes downhill from there the Dirac virtual audio device is standalone is only an 8 channel device which means it should only be able to do 7.1 only however if I try and play back I'm actually not getting any of the rear channels at all and even though it's configured correctly I can go to here although according to the room test it appears that it's the left and right sides that are not working which is really confusing but Apple Music is not delivering that full 7.1 but that's no good anyway we really want the full 7.1.4 experience as the height channels is what really gives the immersive experience so if we just stop that a second and I'm going to quit out of both those apps um, and now we're going to set the system output to the black hole we're going to use the sound output and as it's 16 channel when I launch Apple Music it will see that as a full 7.1.4 so now we need to find a way of running the Dirac 7.1.4 now I use Pro Tools normally which can only do a 7.1.2 bus so um, for this demo we have to use Logic Pro which will actually allow you to create a 7.1.4 bus and then we can put an instance of the Dirac in there on Logic if we go to the settings so we're going to come in through the black hole 16 channel and go out through my normal sound card and here I've created two tracks one which is clean without the Dirac and one with the Dirac and if I hit play you can see we get this full 7.1.4 and now I'm able to run full 7.1.4 and I have to say it totally sounds amazing so now you can run through all your reference tracks with the room correction and check it out and if you like me where you're running a kind of mishmash of I've got PMCs on the front and Genlex um, around the 7 and some Cambridge audio speakers hanging from the ceiling it really does help pull the whole thing together so it's just a shame that they are unable to make this device work in a 16 channel mode and for some reason the 7.1 doesn't even work correctly either and whilst it's set up like this we can even launch the Dolby renderer and if we set its output to the black hole I can check my own mixes and if I'm running in Pro Tools and connecting to the Dolby renderer this is the only way that I can actually use the Dirac multi-channel room correction I have to run a door in the background and uh, that's not really ideal I guess I can use the 7.1.2 in Pro Tools but when I'm mixing I'm mostly mixing in the analog domain and unfortunately Logic doesn't allow you to really easily bounce I.O. plugins in real time so I prefer to work in Pro Tools there are a, f a couple of benefits of working in Logic because now 
Oh, okay, so, sorry, I had to stop filming there, because I was about to demonstrate the AirPods um, on Logic, and I had trouble with the Bluetooth, and I did a Ventura update to 13.4, and that kicked my RME sound card off. I had to go and back to find the install, and when I got to the RME page, it looks like they've completely changed the way that they're doing it. So I had to find an old driver and reinstall it and make sure in the privacy settings that it was allowed. And then I had to update the firmware of the RME card because it needs a new firmware for the new style driver kit. So I've crossed my fingers because <laughs> it's quite an old Radat. But luckily everything turned out fine and I am... Um, I am now on what they call version 1.08 on revision 19. So I've successfully made the jump to the new driver, which is great news. Anyway, back to the story. The plugin works absolutely fantastic in Logic, has to be said. And once you're in Atmos, even though it's a strictly 7.1.2, it realizes that it's a 7.1.4 bus and I can run the uh, room correction. Um, and that would be really, really good if I worked in Logic, um, I was really trying Logic out as an experiment because if you have your AirPods connected and we allow Logic to use the AirPods, then it allows me to use the AirPods with head tracking and spatial audio. Which really is the good way to go, to be honest. The only problem with me is that being an analog devotee, Logic is not really set up for analog I.O. And you can, I mean, you can insert the I.O. And it's great you can set the input and output and do the ping detection for your propagation delay test but it doesn't really easily allow you to record it back in you have to create another aux track and bust that to there and when you're doing say 14 channels all at a time you even have to reset all the pans and everything on the new tracks whereas on pro tools um, i just can select the tracks i want to commit you go right click commit and it bounces them all down so i really prefer to work in pro tools so when you're working in Pro Tools, obviously we have the playback engine is set to the Dolby Audio Bridge. And when we go to the renderer, it has its input as a Dolby Audio Bridge. And I can select the 7.1 8-channel Dirac Virtual Audio Device. And if I set my monitoring to 7.1, we can see that that works great as well. And we now get the full rear channels as well. So um, that works great with the Dolby renderer. But only on the eight channels. And we really, really need the uh, extra height channels for the 7.1.4. It would be really nice if the Dirac virtual audio device would have 12 channels at least. Preferably this should show 16. And then you can still configure all your speakers within there. So I hope that helps anyone in this maze of this new Atmos world. And trying to get you working with multi-channel room correction. And okay, it's not a twin of, but then it's not the price of a twin of. And it really does an amazing job, I have to say. Even my centre speaker, which is set above my monitor screen, so slightly higher than, than my left and right, on the Imagine Dragons track, Enemy, it just brings the vocal 
down into the um, centre rather than being slightly higher. So there's some really clever maths going on there. So yeah, the only thing that's stopping me from buying it is the multi-channel audio device in the audio media setup page. Sometimes children must be very firm with their daddies. Indeed. Like when daddy doesn't want to act in a movie because he thinks the script is bad. So we must plead with them. Please, daddy, please. It's 20 million dollars, daddy. Please, daddy, please. 20 million is still 12 million after taxes, daddy. I want a llama, daddy, please, daddy. Daddy, 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 take daddy, a movie, please. daddy. daddy. And so Derek had 16 channels. If they can sort that out, then I think they're on to winner. Oh. There's one thing I almost forgot. Do you have another minute? When you use the multi-channel software, this is the um, orientation that it shows you how you do your measurements, which I think is the correct way that it should be. Now, this is the way that it shows it when I do it with my mini DSP SHD, which is actually very confusing. So um, I would highly recommend that you use the other orientation on both. Uh, so yeah, hope that helps. Catch you next time.